I remember once we went, decided to go under it. We decided we couldn't get over it, so we better get under it. So we, we were only, what, 20 feet off the water? Yeah. And we had to close, shut down the cowling to keep the engines warm and hot. And uh, it was, and then when you got through it, it was beautiful on the other side. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. My uh, children gave me for my birthday. Uh, I, w I caught a, 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 a print of, of the BBM, yeah. the specs, and all that on it. And I, I, I read on that print that the takeoff weight of a BBM was 50, uh, 57,000 pounds, and the takeoff weight of the Catalina was uh, 35,000 pounds. Yeah, yeah. So it was a lot larger plane. It was much larger and built. We had those things loaded down so much of gasoline <laughs> that we took off. They would weigh much more than that was legal. I know. They were much more than that. Yeah, I know. We should not have operated them that high, but we did. We got by with it. I remember one takeoff, and this was in um, uh, Panama. Yeah. And I don't remember who he was, but he, he was like the, uh, not the commander, but like the, uh, he was a line officer that didn't have to go through flight school to get, he didn't have wings. And uh, invariably, either the commander of the squadron or this type of person, they were the worst pilots in the squadron. Yeah. You remember? And we, I don't remember who that was, Bill. No. Well, we, we were in the Cologne, the harbor there, and we took off. I was the third pilot. So I was standing between the two pilots, and we got into a skid. And we were skidding over the, uh, you know, and uh, right, I looked up and I saw those big boulders out there. And I thought, hell, we're not going to clear those uh, boulders. So I reached up and grabbed the, the two throttles, you know, you have to reach yeah, up. Yeah. And I jammed them past the stop part. Yeah. And I must have goosed them each up to... Oh, I don't know, 2,500 horsepower, and we blasted off, and we cleared those rocks. And I remember I went back to the flight engineer, and he was still white in his face. He says, "Good God!" He says, "I'm glad you were standing there, because <laughs> we wouldn't have cleared those rocks if I hadn't have done that." You wouldn't have done it. That's exactly right. That's right. So anyhow, yeah, I just we had some we had, we did have some customers that fortunately we pulled through. Yeah, how, how about the night? I think it was uh, Bob. One Co of those guys didn't make it, you know. I know. One of them was trying, and he didn't loud enough. So they ran right into the rocks and blew up. I don't remember that. Yeah, killed him through everybody. Well, I remember one plane. We lost totally, and everyone on it. And I thought that was a plane that had. This is off of the um, Panama. I thought that was a plane that had picked up a possible target, and it was a searchlight plane. And I think the the pilot was named Spanoff. And he. he yeah, I remember Spanoff. Yeah, he was a kind of a senior guy. Yeah. And he either came in too low, or one of the two pilots involved looked out and lost his focus, you know, because of the glare. 
And that was a plane that we lost totally. The only, the only thing we found in that plane was a wing float. And yeah, I remember that. the story I got was he maybe came in too low and hit the mast of the ship that he'd picked up. Well, chances are, Bill, it was, uh, it was a very delicate situation. Yeah. At night, at night when you made your run in on the submarine, uh, you, uh, had you decided that you made, wanted to make an attack on it. Right. You had, you had to make your run down at 300 feet. That's right. And 300 were supposed to be the limit. But when you switch that light on. Oh, boy. Still, you couldn't tell how high or where you were. That's right. In other words. And they got down to where it was a really a tough as a coat pilot. Right. Had to be and remain on the instrument. That's right. At 300 feet because he tipped you off the water. The pilot could not tell. Right. I remember that. It's like looking at a big uh, light reflecting on water and you couldn't tell where you were. That's right. Well, that was. So you had a short time to make a run in. I, I damn near ended up on that flight, too. I remember. Uh, you know, there were um, a fellow named Fane. He was he was he was on the flight as the third pilot. Yeah. Uh, J- uh, Muller, Miller, J- Jimmy Miller. He was supposed to be on the flight, but he had some ear problem. So Sidney Fane drew the uh, flight, and it could have been me or Tom uh, Mahoney or Ted Walmuth. So uh, I lucked out. Uh, you sure did, buddy. I really did. That was a God looking out after you. That's right. Absolutely right. Well, listen, I just want to say hi to you. Well, Bill, I'm so glad you called. And uh, everything is going well here. Good. And uh, you're okay. Oh, yeah, I'm fine. Well, I'm sure glad, and uh, let's keep in touch, will you? We sure will. And oh. I'll give you, I won't wait quite so long next time. Okay. All right, well, it's nice chatting, and you enjoy your family visit. Well, thank you, Bill, so much. Okay. I appreciate that, buddy, and thank you again for calling. Just wanted to say hi. Oh, Bill, thank you much. Right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Hey, Dad. I was an old father.